So in this video, we wanted to give you an easy way of understanding the mechanics of breathing, what actually happens in our body, what's Boyle's law, and what's the physiology behind it. If that's what you're after, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So inspiration, breathing in, and expiration, breathing out, allows for the exchange and transport of oxygen to our body tissues and the removal of carbon dioxide. But first of all, what actually happens when we breathe? So if we look at the anatomy of the thorax, we need to understand some important muscular structures. First, the diaphragm, which we can see here at the lower part of the thoracic cage, as well as the internal and external intercostal muscles, which attach to the ribs. Inspiration is an active process requiring the contraction of those muscles. So when the intercostal muscles contract, and the diaphragm contracts by flattening, it pulls the thoracic cage up and out. Now we can forcefully expire, but on the whole, expiration is a passive process requiring the relaxation of those muscles. So when the diaphragm relaxes by rising and the intercostal muscles relax, the thoracic cage moves down and in. Now, if we consider our lung tissue anatomy, between the lung tissue and the thoracic cage where our ribs are located is where we find the pleural linings. We have the parietal pleura, which is a lining that attaches to the ribs, and we have the visceral pleura, which is a lining that attaches to the lungs. Now, this is where the body is really clever. Between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura sits the pleural cavity. This space is filled with pleural fluid in a vacuum. The force from the surface tension within the fluid keeps the visceral pleura against the parietal pleura. That means that the lungs are kept against the thoracic cage, and therefore when the thoracic cage moves, the lungs move with it. So that's what happens. The intercostal muscles and diaphragm act on the thoracic cage, and the pleura keeps the lungs against the thoracic cage, so the two move together. Now let's talk about how it happens, and to understand why air moves from the atmosphere into our lungs, it's helpful to understand Boyle's law. So Boyle's law simply states that the volume of gas is inversely proportional to its pressure when the temperature remains constant. So to break that down, when the volume increases, its pressure decreases. When the volume decreases, its pressure increases. And we know, again, when at a constant temperature, that air or gas moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Now that's really key, so let's say that one more time. When the temperature is constant, gas or air moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So when we are at rest with no breathing, the atmospheric pressure is 760 millilitres of mercury, and the intrapulmonary pressure, the pressure within the lungs, is also 760 millilitres of mercury. Another way we can say this is that the pressure is zero, because there is no difference in the pressure on the outside and the pressure on the inside. So therefore, during inspiration, we have contraction of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles that moves the thoracic cage up and out. That means that the lungs move with it, and therefore the lungs expand, increasing the volume of the lungs. Remember, as per Boyle's law, when the volume increases, the pressure decreases, and therefore the pressure within the lungs reduces from 760 millilitres of mercury to 759 millilitres of mercury. Remember, as we said before, air or gas moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And because the pressure within the lungs decreases, it means that the air moves from the atmosphere into the lungs. So moving on to expiration. As we said earlier, this is a passive process mainly, whereby the relaxation of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles mean that the thoracic cage moves down and in. The lungs move with it, which means that the volume of the lungs reduces or decreases. As we said with Boyle's law, when the volume decreases, the pressure increases. And in fact, the pressure within the lungs increases from about 759 millilitres of mercury to 761 millilitres of mercury. Now, final point. We know that gas or air moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And therefore, the increase in pressure within the lungs means that the air moves from the lungs 
to the atmosphere. So a quick summary of that second section. As per Boyle's law, the volume of a gas is inversely proportionate to its pressure when temperature is the same. Therefore, when the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Therefore, when the volume of the lungs increases, pressure decreases and air moves in. When the volume decreases, the pressure increases. So when the volume of the lungs decreases, pressure within the lungs increases and air moves in. Out. So guys, we really hope this video helps you understand the mechanics of breathing. We'd be super grateful for your support in smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel for more updates. And also check us out on social media at Clinical Physio on Instagram. And we've got loads of resources for you on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you really soon here on Clinical Physio.